Hey, what's up? It's Midge Anthony, a.k.a. DJ Love Cheese for Nude Hippo. And did you ever make a model when you were a kid? I know I did. And if you ever made one, you most likely made a Ravel model. Their headquarters are right here in Elk Grove Village. And today, we're going to find out everything that you wanted to know about how a model is made and how you could make one. And we're going to find it all out from Lou Aguilera. He is the model man. Let's go talk to him. Okay, we're here with Lou Aguilera. Lou, how are you? Very good. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, how long has Ravel Models been around? 72 years, since 1945. Monogram was actually its own company. Correct. Correct. Started here in Morton Grove in Chicago, Monogram did. And Ravel started in California, both around the same time, both mid-40s. And then Ravel bought Monogram, and then it was Ravel Monogram. So now uh, Monogram was making balsam wood models. These are some of the very first models that Monogram did. You had to whittle it uh, with a knife, right? You had to glue it together. A lot of time consuming uh, uh, labor goes into these. This is before uh, plastic injection molding existed. And it was late 40s, early 50s when uh, injection molding uh, came to market. And so these are some of the first models that you see here of some of the monsters. This is when we first started getting into injection molding. The Universal Monsters, people still go crazy for them. These were huge. People loved these. Yeah, you can find these out. You know, out and collectors look for this. So this is kind of rare to find. We haven't produced these in a while, and uh, maybe it's time to, to redo some. So it went from balsa wood, plastic injected molding, and then it started getting more involved with more pieces and more intricate. And now what year were these? Late 70s, right? We still manufacture these today. And as you noticed, right, with your balsa wood, you, you can't get as much detail, right? That was the big benefit of the injection molding is putting plastic into steel molds and, and look at the, the fine detail that you, that you can get, right? And so then over the years, subject matter expanded, right? We went into model airplanes, we went into model boats, and then in really the 60s and 70s, uh, with the automobile industry exploding, so did model building exploding into, uh, in, into, into model cars. When did it really become like commercial? What would have been one of the first movies that was like inspired a model? Wow, that's a tough question. I have that. That's a tough one. I, you know, certainly Star Wars has been a big uh, feature for us uh, now, and certainly uh, in the in the '80s. But you can see how we've gone back now in in time. We have now coming out uh, Grease Lightning. This is something that has not been released uh, yet. We've never done it as uh, Grease Lightning. Um, we've just recently announced it. There is the prototype that's being used in the uh, in the box art. Uh, so that'll be a new model for us, but subject matter wise, it's not new, right? Um, same thing with ZZ Top. We have had that uh, model out in the past, but we are reintroducing it here. And then we've also gotten into other licenses with modeling. You can see we have uh, Chip Foose, Fast and Furious. So we're trying to combine you know, today's subject matter along with kind of some of the old school uh, model, uh, model building. You know, people build models for many different reasons and there's a lot of personal connections that they have. Uh, a lot of memories are sparked when you're, yeah. when you're building a model and that's what, that's what all this is about. So so we have Cars 3, we have Scooby-Doo. How has Scooby-Doo been? I mean, it seems like Scooby-Doo, it's, it's always there. It's just always been around. How has that hung in? So Scooby-Doo as a subject matter for us is brand new. We just launched this this year. So here's another example of how we're kind of going back in time subject matter wise, but we're bringing something to market now uh, recently. And starting here with you know Cars 3, this is all part of our trying to uh, bring product that's more relevant for today's kids. Yeah. Uh, and now we're incorporating different kinds of materials, more durable plastic. We're incorporating lights and sound. Uh, we're, we're improving the buildability of the product so the parts are bigger uh, and they're more durable so little hands can manage them and put them together in less in less time. Now you can take these, you, you build it, and you can play with it. It's got lights. So you not only get the joy of a kid building it, these you don't have to use glue. This is for five years old and up. You don't need paint, you don't need glue. It screws together and you can put it together and take it apart. And then we've included in the kit different mouths so you can put in different facial features, right? And simply exchange, uh, change that out, different mouths and different eyes. And as you notice, the uh, lights and sound. There it is, nailed it, Catch gotcha. So now the coup de gras, probably forever, 
Forever. for the for Ravel models has been Star Wars because like you said it's been around since the 70s and it's it's always been there and people have always been a fan of Star Wars and people are still fans of Star Wars so how long will these Star Wars models go on most likely forever you know we're planning on them being in our line for quite a while uh, certainly there's been a resurgence here of Star Wars since 2015 with the Force Awakens and we've been engaged with them uh, since then for Force Awakens Rogue One and now The Last Jedi and these are models now for The Last Jedi that we just introduced here in uh, in September, uh, and you know these are just fantastic products. Again, this is the build and play line, so it is geared more toward kids. Um, they all have lights and sound, and they use plastics. It's very durable, so if kids drop them, they're not going to break, uh, and they can um, they can handle them and play with them once they're uh, once they're built. But you also have this one. Because this isn't for a kid. This isn't build and play. This is... Oh, this is a 904-piece model. So for the serious-minded modeler who's been modeling since they were a kid, how long do you think it would take them to put this together? Uh, this is months of work. It really is months of work. You know, a lot of detail, uh, a lot of paint, and uh, you take your time, you do a good job on it, and you can see what you get as a result. Wow, that's a lot of work. But, I mean, look how cool it is. It's, it's, a, it's a display piece and something to be uh, proud of. Okay, Lou, so where are we right now? Right now we're in the uh, engineering department and we're showing you how we go from concept to final, final product. So now somebody comes to you with an idea and they say, okay, we want to do a Kylo Ren TIE Fighter. So it starts back here with drawings. Yep, starts with drawings. And then we've got to figure out how many pieces are we going to break up this product into so that the kids can assemble it. Do we want it to be 150 pieces or do we want it to be 20 pieces? And that's what this first drawing shows you is that we're looking at about a 30 to a 32 piece part count. Right? And once we figure that out, then we come over here to Ron. And Ron is our, uh, our CAD designer. And he does all of our computer work, computer-aided design, right? And so he gets on the computer and he starts drawing on his computer all these parts. So now I'm looking here and there's drawings, little pieces, models. Now for, to go from computer to drawing, to plastic, to pieces, to model. How long does it take to go from start to finish? So from start to the time uh, someone can buy it off the shelf, it's usually a full year. So what we've got here is after we figured out uh, what parts we want to cut up. We've also got to figure out the size of the product that we want. So we actually uh, have uh, Chris Boris here and he uses paper to put together a, a model using paper to give us an idea of the actual size. Right? And then we'll lay this out relative to the other models that we're designing to see do we like that size compared to everything else? Do we think it's going to fit in our box? Etc. Etc. From there, then we go into over by Ron, right? And he does all his design. Once he's done with his computer, now with modern technology, we can use 3D printing, which has really changed how we design models, right? Because now we can come here and this is a 3D print. After Ron has done his CAD design work, we can get a view of what it's going to look like out of the computer. That's printing it right out of the 3D printer. Then, as you go to the right here, this is also a 3D print. So we've added more detail. You can see here how it's very plain. And over here, now you're getting into some, some detail. So Ron's done more work here. We've done another 3D print, and we can start to see how it's starting to take form. All right, and now the next one over here, the, the fourth one over. Again, this is a, a final uh, 3D print that's all uh, now painted. And now we look at this, we say, okay, we like the size, we like the detail. Now we're ready to go cut steel okay and now you take the next step it's another investment level we have to get to and then you get to your final your final production piece or your final sample just before production so it's quite a, a process but with today's technology of, of 3d printing it's really changed the whole development process so now we're in the tooling room as you called it so this is almost archaic com compared to the stuff we were just looking at the 3d printing is a explain what these are so these are steel molds that are used to put into injection molding machines uh, plastic will inject through the center here and fill up all these runners so those parts trees that you see with the parts on them they pop right out of here uh, and once it's dry and then that goes that's what goes into your box what are all these boxes? Is this like where you keep all the old stuff? What is this exactly? That's exactly what this is. This is a complete historical of our line. So this is all models that have been produced. They're in their boxes, in their original state, going back decades. Uh, this is a historical archive. 
Oh, so these are the actual models. They're not the molds and stuff. Those are the actual models. So if I said I wanted an actual from 1957, uh, one of the Universal Monsters, you could actually like, okay, that's in Skid 4, Box 5. It's, it's in there. <laughs> and these are all from how, like, how long ago until... Oh, I would say we probably have models in here that go back into the back into the 50s. Yeah, yeah, and we wrap all the way around here. You know, this is a whole archival of our of our history. Can we climb up there and just look around? Do you mind? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lou, if people want to find out more about Ravel modeling and how it got started and how they can get into it and what kind of models you make, where could they go to? So go to uh, Ravel.com, R-E-V-E-L-L.com, and there you'll find all kinds of information on how to get started in modeling. You'll find our full product line. You'll find some history on the company. Uh, you'll find information on consumer service, and you'll find a uh, where to buy. I think you could find Ravel models at almost any, you know, hobby store, toy store. They're, they're everywhere, I would imagine. That's right. Hobby shops, uh, and Hobby Lobby, Michaels, uh, our Star Wars product you can find at uh, Target. Excellent. Thank you for the tour. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's been fun. Yeah, it has. This has been a presentation of Old Pie Productions. Tony, can you shut up? How about way in the future where everybody has a 3D printer at home, you print your own model, you buy the, you know, the directions from Ravel, and then you just print them out at home and then build it yourself. How soon before that happens? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the future. That is the future. <laughs>